first visited this location in 2006 when I took a 12 month break to do a hot lap of Australia in Shorty. And I've been trying to get back ever since because this is regarded as one of the best four wheel drive destinations in Australia. This is Fraser Island. Everywhere we go, we seem to see something different completely. Absolutely magic. Who wants to go home in a hurry? Joining me on my Fraser adventure, we've got Jamie Hazelden in his trusty Land Rover Defender. Now, Jamie is a 12 volt electronics guru and he's a great bloke to travel with. Also, along for the ride is my mate and four wheel drive action editor, Sean Whale. Whether it's driving the peaks of the Victorian high country or spear fishing in the depths of the Gulf, Sean's the kind of bloke that lives and breathes outdoor adventure. Lads, I tell you what, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't excited. I cannot wait for this trip. How about you two? Mate, I'm pumped to put it short. I'm excited. I can see a GT coming on. Hey, how do you reckon you're going to go pulling that big boat, Sean? Eh? Well, this is a big test right here. It's the first time I've had it on the sand properly. It's, um, I can feel it's behind me, that's for sure. Yeah, look, this is probably one of the worst sections just here, I've heard, in front of the barge. In fact, it, it's a bit embarrassing for a few people, but, mate, I just cannot wait for this trip. Look at the water. Look at that water. Hey, Graham, we might even be able to put you on a few fish, mate. I know about fishing, mate. Yeah. <laughs> know all about fishing. Well, we're on the barge. This will be only my second time on the island. If you ask a local, that means I've never really been here before. But guys, you are not newcomers to Fraser Island. You've both been here, what, dozens of times between you? And Jamie, yeah. Jamie more so than me. Yeah. Well, what have been... you bought, Sean? Well, lots of fishing gear. Yeah, mate, yeah. Heaps yeah, of yeah. that. There's yeah. no shortage of lures or hooks yeah. or whatnot. Stack of fuel too. I've got, um, I don't, I've only got a pretty small tank. Yeah. And um, to save buying it on the island, I've got a few jerrys to sort of get me out of trouble. One thing I have learned above all else in the sand is someone's going to get bogged at some point. It's pretty much inevitable. Uh, tire pressures play a huge role, but it's still going to happen. Jamie, what do you carry by way of recovery gear, mate? Well, as usual, I've got the high lift with me, but I've got the exhaust jack for this one for the sand. Perfect for the sand. Perfect for the sand, mate. Yeah, you reckon you'd be able to lift that, what, 16 tonne of truck up? It's to help me, but I won't get stuck anyway, so. Of course not. Of course not. <laughs> all right, boys, you can tell by the swells picking up a little. The island's just here. Let's go down, see if we can get the Defender started first, if we can. Good idea. <laughs> get, off this, get off this boat, get on the island and get stuck into it. I like the sound of that, mate. Cannot wait. Cannot wait. This is going to be absolutely awesome. Right now, we're on 75 Mile Beach on the east side of Fraser Island, and we're heading north. We're on a journey that's going to take us past the Mahino Wreck up past Orchid Beach and right up to the tip of Fraser Island to Sandy Cape. Along the way, we're going to be exploring the island and seeking out some of the best spots that you can visit only if you have a four-wheel drive. Hey Jamie, according to the VMS mate, this is Poyungan Rocks up here. Can you actually get around this on a low tide? Yeah, you sure can. Um, that's, they've got the little track that goes inland there a bit. That's to just duck you through when it's high tide like we've got now. I'll have to go nice and easy with a boat through here. Yeah, mate, gently, gently. We might need that later. How'd you go coming through there with the big boat on the back, Sean? No problem, mate. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. I had to go a lot slower than you blokes, though, just to make sure that trailer gets through unscathed, you know? Tell you what would be interesting though is taking this boat through Ningala Rocks if you can even get it through there. I haven't been up that far, mate, so I'm looking forward to seeing how we go up there. Geez, I'm looking forward to seeing how old Shorty goes up there, let alone you towing a boat. Yeah, that's gonna be um <laughs> that's gonna be a real challenge, that one. What a beauty! Woohoo! Love this stuff! Look at that! Look at that! I'm loving this! Fraser Island, of course, is surrounded by salt water, but inland is some of the freshest water you're going to find anywhere on the globe. We took some time out to go and check out a few of the inland lakes and maybe have a swim. To get to any of the inland lakes, you have to negotiate some pretty windy single lane tracks. So we opted to leave Sean's boat on the beach, which gives us a hassle-free journey and the chance to appreciate the scenic drive. 
Uh, you know, it's, uh, it, it's really quite spun out. We've just come up off the beach here. Well, we've only come a couple of K. We're right thick in the heart of a rainforest here. That's one of the great things about Fraser. It's on the beach, then you get wood forest, then you get rainforest, you get, it every, you get everything on a sand island. It's pretty amazing. It's not, it's not like there's just one type of tree, which I could understand if one species of tree had colonised the island. That'd make sense, but it's, it's got a thick diversity of, uh, of plant life. It's amazing. Everywhere we go, we seem to see something different completely. What really strikes me is the colour of all the moss on the sides here. It's like a, it's like a scene out of Lord of the Rings. Yeah, and can you imagine they used to log this place in the 1940s? But even, I mean, you, you can't see that they've logged the place, you know? It's all come back. Nature, she's a, uh, she's persistent. Well, that's the thing, unless you read it in the history books, you wouldn't have a clue they logged this place. Or unless Ruthie had told you. <laughs> well, that's actually who told me. <laughs> The first lake that we're stopping by is called Lake Wobby. Weird name, beautiful spot. That's if you make it down here alive. Really? <laughs> we're laughing because Jamie's gonna be fine. It was just a jumping ant and they're not venomous. But be warned, they do pack a heck of a nasty punch. It's all good, it's all good. Lake Wobby is situated right next to a huge sand blow, which is slowly moving into the lake and swallowing the surrounding forest at a rate of about three metres a year. In just under 20 years or so, this lake will be all gone. What's great is that Lake Wobby provides habitat to several species of fish, including dozens of catfish that line the edge in search of food. Come on lads, let's get in there. On a hot day like this, there is nothing like a freshwater lake to cool you down. And Lake Wobby is the perfect example. <laughs> Surprisingly, we found that these catfish don't scare easily and they're all around us as we swim. So we decided to give them a little treat. He says it, he's honing in. Oh! Whoa! <laughs> I'm gonna give one by hand. Oh, no! <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> here we go, here we go. That's about a bigger No, no, he's coming in, honing in. Whoa! <laughs> well, anyone that's been to Fraser Island knows there's an absolute billion marsh flies. And some of them are big suckers too, so we've been uh, culling the population of marsh flies by feeding them to these freshwater catfish here in Lake Wobby. We'll see if we can get another one to eat. <laughs> How good's that? Incredible, eh? <laughs> well, as much fun as this is, lads, we could be here all day and we've still got a lot of ground to cover. All oh, the way this north. This is good, this Come is on. good, Come I on. like get this. Out. Get out of the water. Come on, let's go. Back on the tracks, and it's always important to think about your safety and the safety of others. You know, these tight, twisty tracks that crisscross Fraser Island, you've really got to be aware of the fact that you're not alone out here and people could be coming in the opposite direction. Really got to be aware, you've got to be thinking ahead. Look at the corner and think to yourself, what are you going to do if a car comes around the other side? Now it's all well and good to say, well I'm not speeding, I'm not going very fast, but the other person could be. Also, if you're the lead vehicle like I am right now, and you do meet oncoming traffic, be sure to jump on the radio straight away and let everyone behind you know, because you might come to a screeching halt, <laughs> the bloke behind you, he's got to do the same thing. Bit of common sense, you'll be right. Well, here we are sitting in a very flooded Lake Alom. The water level is right up. In fact, the boardwalk ends down by those reeds over there, but just here, it's above head, deep. This place is home to several hundred eastern long-neck turtles. Now, they're a cute little critter. They grow to about 25 centimetres in length, but they've got a serious jaw on them because they actually eat other fish and small mammals, reptiles, etc., etc., and they use that jaw to rip bits of flesh off. So when Sean o picks one up, I can't wait to see the expression on his face when it bites his finger off. They're all around us here. It's just a matter of seeing them. So if we sit really carefully, we'll be right. See what we find. <laughs> well, it looks like the turtles in Lake Alom are a lot more shy than those catfish we saw. 
I jumped in the water with Sean, but I think we must have scared him off. Well, maybe Sean I scared him off. Oh well, never mind. Because later in our trip, we're going to meet a much larger cousin who just loves the beach. Most of the inland tracks on Fraser are pretty well maintained and they provide easy access for those with less four-wheel driving experience. But look, there's been a heck of a lot of rain up here recently, as we could tell by just how full Lake Alom was. So it wasn't surprising that we would come across a few big puddles along the way. This one was about to claim a souvenir from Jamie's Land Rover. Hey Jamie, I think you just lost your plate, mate. <laughs> you serious? Yeah, your front number plate. You went in with it, you came out without it. All right, I better go back for that, eh? It's something in the corner of my eye didn't look right back there, but then again, it was a Defender. Bits fall off it all the time. <laughs> oh, come on, mate. <laughs> the dead giveaway for me, mate, was that you went in with a number plate. Yeah. But you come out without one. Oh, come here. I, did, I didn't even realise. Yeah. At one stage when I went in there, I thought, oh, wait, I don't know if I've given this enough. <laughs> oh, it's the same right about I don't want to be that guy. Right, I'm going to be that guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It smells as good as it looks, I tell you. Yeah, no, it smells good. It smells real good. Oh, hang on, what's that? Nah. Oh! Yeah. Oh, so close! That's not mine! Oh, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> oh! Got it? Nah, thought I had it. This is exciting. Not as cool. Oh! Yeah! Winner, winner! Hey! Is that it? That's the one, eh? <laughs> he cut my toe off. Yeah, the WA player. Help me back it! <laughs> Oh, it's punched through there. Yeah, punched through the yeah. holes. Oh, well, there you go. I think you got the first shout tonight, mate. Woo! Yeah. Woo, dog. <laughs> mate. Yeah, mate. That is unreal. Oh, I got the easy job. <laughs> Seeing you guys suffer anyway. Look at that. Yeah. That is a horse. Getting up to this part of Fraser Island is not all that difficult. I wouldn't class it as extreme. You've got to watch the tides and you've got to know a little bit about beach driving. Now the problem you're going to get into, of course, is when you've got your tyre pressure so low that you run the risk of rolling your tyre off the rim and that's exactly what happened to our camera car. That's right. On the way back out to the beach, the camera boys have had a minor mishap. Lucky for us, Jamie's bought his sand jack and we're going to solve the problem in no time. Well, just another day in the four-wheel drive action office here. What we've got here is a crippled crew car. And we've rolled a tyre off the rim in this extremely soft sand. So what we've done, we've whacked an exhaust jack under the front, lifted it up, we've knocked the old one off. We're about to put a brand new back on, continue pushing north. In a situation like this, it really does make sense to carry a spare tyre. Then, you can fix the one that's come off the bead in the comfort of your camp, rather than squatting down underneath a jack in the sand. You're going to have to come up the, the track here, but you're going to have to give it the berries a bit up. <laughs> Only a short run further up the beach and we hit camp. Well, at least most of us do. Well, as you can imagine, we've hit the first bit of soft sand for the entire trip so far and it's right where we're trying to get up to this beautiful campsite up above the beach here. Shano's having a few troubles getting the boat up here, but there's no real need for him to bring the boat. I think we're gonna leave it down here in our private driveway, get the 60 up here, and I reckon we should get some tea on. There are designated camp spots all over Fraser, and many of them just off the back of the beach like this one. Make sure though, that before you come over, you get all your camping permits sorted when you book in on the manta ray. Jamie certainly got this camping caper down pat. His setup is great for these types of trips and it's not long until we're all getting stuck in and using his gear. The yep. first time I came up here, this is actually the place that got me into four-wheel driving. Is that right? Yeah. We came up here for the first four-wheel drive trip we ever did. Um, I was just hooked from then on. Yeah. I learned how to drive the forerunner on the beach. You right? Oh mate, I'm, 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 I'm good as gold. <clears throat> Righto. Good as gold. Stand back, let a professional have a go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that what we're going to work with, is it? Oh, it actually looks a lot like your abs. <laughs> oh, yeah. Beautiful. 
Now, we wait about eight hours and they should be cooked. It's been a long day and there's nothing better than a good feed and a bit of a yarn at the end of it all. This is great. As good as it gets. Four Wheel Drive Supercenter's motto is quality products at wholesale prices. Many customers ask how Four Wheel Drive Supercenter can sell quality products at lower prices than most competitors. The reason is simple. Many other four wheel drive companies rely on a middleman or independent dealer whose commission adds to the final price tag. Because four wheel drive supercenters sell only through the web and company owned stores, they can offer wholesale prices direct to you. Take a look at all our quality products and our wholesale prices direct to the public at www.fourwheeldrivesupercenter.com.au or visit one of our stores. This camp, like many up and down the beaches of Fraser, has got very soft sand at the entry. Here would be a very good place to demonstrate a self-recovery. Well, I've really done a deal here, haven't I? Happens to us all, and if it happens when you're on your own, getting bogged can be a real problem. Of course, in soft sand such as this, the first thing you would do is let your tyres down even more. But what if your tyres can't go down anymore, or you've actually bellied out on the chassis and you physically can't get traction to move forward? One way to get yourself out of a situation such as this is with a portable anchor. Let me show you how. A sand anchor is exactly as the name suggests, a portable anchor that can be used when no other is available. Now we're using the sand anchor on Fraser Island, where it's perfect, but there are so many different environments where it could come into its own. That's the anchor burying itself, which is perfect, digging itself deep, deep down into the soil, or the sand in this case. The deeper it goes, the better the grip, the better the anchor. All right, well, that's me out of trouble. As simple as that. All I've got to do now, put the anchor away, chuck it in the back of Shorty, and be on my way. They really are a worthwhile investment, especially if you're going to come into remote areas, and do it solo. Beautiful little queenie. This is just one of hundreds of species of fish you'll find all over Fraser Island, including somewhere such as Eli Creek, where you're going to find jungle perch. Hey lads. Uh... According to the, uh, the old GPS here, it looks like this is Eli Creek. Yeah, Eli Creek's a mad spot. I think we definitely have to stop here. It's um, full of um, jungle perch, actually. You're kidding me? Jungle perch? Yeah, mate. This is one of the only spots in Queensland. There's a stack of spots up in the Daintree, but this far south, it's one of the only spots you'll get um, JPs down here, and they're obviously seen a fair amount of tourists, and um, you can get right up to them and have a good look at them. That's insane. In fact, that little drop-off into the creek's pretty insane, too. Gonna pull up here, lads. Stop and jump out, eh? Eli Creek is the largest creek on the east coast of the island and it pumps out a staggering 80 million litres of fresh water per day. So, what am I looking for here? Chances are you'll find them in the, in the structure. But wait till we get up the top here. Yep. I'll guarantee you hundreds of them. Hundreds? Hundreds. Eels are coming. See, we can go back and you get back into that current, it's quite something to see. The fast flowing creek has a strong current and it's a great place to relax while you float downstream. However, we're here for another reason altogether and that's so that we can get a closer look at its fishy inhabitants. That's insane. There's so many down there. Seeing as those darn March flies were ever present down the creek, we thought we'd have another go at using them to feed the fish. Sure, if one comes up and gets out of your finger. Yeah, I would too. Whoa! Oh, 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 o
<laughs> Can you believe it? They snapped at it like a shark at meal times. Well, there you go, Eli Creek. Catching a few March flies, feeding them to the jungle perch. That is about as much fun as you can have with your clothes on. I tell you what, this place is absolutely insane. It's freezing cold in this water, <laughs> super fresh water. You can drink it and you can feed the fish. And then one comes up. <laughs> Only three k's north of Eli Creek and you're not going to miss another of Fraser's most famous landmarks. Hey, Sean, mate, that wouldn't be a big pile of 60 parts out there, would it? No, mate, it's um, it's a sign of the last blanket trying to tow a boat up here. <laughs> <laughs> that is the wreck of the Mahino, mate. It, uh, certainly has seen better days. Probably give this another 10 years and there won't be much left. We've got a few bits and pieces on the beach. A little bit like uh, Jamie's Defender, mate. You know, the thing about tyre pressures on Fraser Island is it's so hard to determine what you're going to need, whether it be 18, 15, 25 psi. But a rule of thumb I've always stuck to is, when you let your foot off the accelerator, put the car out of gear, you should coast to a stop. Look what I mean. Car's out of gear, I'm just rolling nicely to a stop. That means my tyre pressures are just about right. And of course, as we all know, we've been through this a dozen times before, lowering your tyre pressures, bags your tyres out, increases your service area, gives you a lot more grip on the sand. Graham, we're coming up to the Indian Head Blow here. Um, this will probably be a bit soft for the boat, so um, we might have to change around a bit here. Yeah, I might actually jump in between you guys, so I've got a vehicle in front and a vehicle behind. Yeah, good call, good call, mate. Righto, I'm gonna give it. Uh, I'm gonna give it a go, guys. I'll let you know when I get to the other side. Cool, mate. This place is renowned for its soft sand at the entry. So it's important to double check your tyre pressures are correct for this style of sand driving. Righto, come on through. Sean, on the other hand, has got to think about the boat. So whilst he's going to require momentum, he's going to have to back off a bit if he's going to make it to the other end with the boat still on the trailer. Alright, I'm going to follow through now too. Yeah, it's a notorious spot, isn't it? But yet, the best one's to come. He's on. Yeah. Oh. 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 <laughs> Beautiful, sweet. Beautiful. opportunities on Fraser are just about endless. Down around Wathumba Creek, Jamie told us you've got a good chance of getting a mud crab. So we decided to head down the track to the other side of the island and put the pots in. Wathumba Creek is on the western side of Fraser. So we're going to take the 15 kilometre track that heads out of Orchid Beach and cuts directly across the island. We all seem to be travelling pretty well, with the track being in excellent shape. That is, until we hear Sean A come over the radio with a bit of a problem. Hey guys, I might just stop up here um, and check that trailer out, I just hit something. Right, mate. No worries. What's happened? Better go and have a look, eh? See what he's done. Didn't feel that bad, but have a look at it. <laughs> oh, wow. Crikey. We're not going yeah, no. back in. Yeah. You'd be good. pretty used to beating the crud out of bits of metal, owning a 60 with <laughs> Well, mate, that's why I carry a big hammer and a big screwdriver, and it usually fixes most things. Now, with Sean O hitting the gym regularly back in Sydney, I stood back while he set to work on smashing that wheel into place. This should be no problem for Sean O. Do you want a break? Yeah, have a go. <laughs> or maybe not. <laughs> I'll take the glory. The beauty of a metal rim, though, is that a bit of a hammer and a strong arm should knock that back into shape in no time. Should have been a blacksmith. Good to go. For 
from there, it's just a simple matter of reinflating the tyre and we're on our way. Well, that is a real life example of one of the benefits of having a steel rim as opposed to an alloy. Had that been an alloy, dunno, I don't like our chances. I reckon it would have cracked rather than bend, but you saw how big that bend was. A couple of dozen hits with a decent hammer. She's back into shape, holding air, and we're back on the track. It really does pay if you're gonna go to some remote places such as this, such as the Kimberley, such as the Simpson, and you're gonna tow something, I reckon go with a steely over an alloy. Behind the scenes, Jamie's been telling us all about Wathumba Creek, and I have to say, I'm more than just a little bit excited. It sounds awesome. But as soon as it becomes apparent, awesome is an understatement. Hey lads, I'm just about to drop down onto the beach. Oh boy. <laughs> Utterly sensational. Crikey. You can sort of see why I like coming over here, eh? Look at the sand, it's beautiful white. Look at the water, it's aqua blue. This is pretty special. I think you found paradise, Graham. Arriving at Wathumba Creek and realising that we're the only ones here is a fantastic feeling. You know, it's places like this that really strengthen my love of four-wheel driving and the outdoors. It's places like this that are just so relaxing. It almost makes time stand still. It's great to have moments like this, to unwind and unravel your thoughts about your life. It gives you a chance to take stock Look at your past and where you are now. I'm glad I've got a four-wheel drive and I'm glad that I got out here. While Sean and I are busy trying to catch dinner, Jamie deploys the tinny by using his new boat loader. You like that? That's the bee's knees, isn't it? Yeah. If you travel to remote places and you travel alone, this thing makes jobs like this so much easier. There you go. All right, the basics of what we got here is a crab net, mud crab net. Pretty basic, really. They store flat. Then you get these spreader poles here that spread them open again. Crab comes along. Tries to have a bit of a bite of that fish head, but then he can't get out because of the conical nature of the outside exit. Up here, it's in a fence, not to put your name and address on every single pot you're going to put out. You also got to write the same thing on your float when you leave them out there. The western side of the island is covered in mangroves, and it's a great place to find critters such as mangrove jack, brim, whiting, and of course, mud crabs. The best place to set your crab pots is in amongst the mangrove structure. That way, the crabs don't have to move too far before they find your bait. That's the shot. Well, with Thumber Creek, what an absolutely stunning bit of real estate. It's one of those areas I am dead certain I'm gonna to wanna to come back to. So what I'm gonna do, Put a waypoint on the old VMS here, store it internally on the GPS unit, and when I'm next on Fraser Island, I'm going to bring that up, follow the track in, and come back to paradise. We're leaving the pots and we'll come back and check them later. We're heading back to the eastern side of the island to continue our journey to Sandy Cape. Camping up at the tip is just magnificent especially when you're going to be eating the fresh fish, or in our case, squid for dinner. Being up and around the corner of Fraser means that you get some shelter from the wind and, of course, you get to enjoy the beautiful sunsets too. This is the life. You, you make rings, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do another little thing that I, I quite like. Let's say that's that's a half a half a ring right there. Turn it over so that this, the hard side is on the outside. So you score it across the top lightly like that, and then you come backwards again against it, yeah, right. like that. When you then fry it, 
it bends open like that, like you get in the fish and chip shop. Yeah, right. How many times have you been up here, Jamie? Couldn't even count. Yeah. Been up here a couple. <laughs> well, look, see how that's curling up there? Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm about. Oh, that might do for now. You can smell it, can't you? Yeah, I can there it is. That's unreal. That's the way. How's that one now, looking? It's good, isn't it? As far as I'm concerned, and I know I say it time and time again, this really is what it's all about. Don't know if you boys agree. But this is as good as it gets. <laughs> Absolutely as good as it gets. Yep. Couldn't ask for any more. Cheers, eh? Cheers. 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 Cheers, Damien. Mm. What does the camera crew want, Nick? I don't think they do. Oh, I don't think so either. I think. Now you can get a two inch road legal lift with the extra flex of up to a four inch lift. That's right, get a two inch lift to make your four wheel drive handle better and avoid driveline problems and still have the flex and wheel travel of a much taller lift. Flexi coils are Australian made using the best quality BHP Micro Alloy X5K steel available. Flexi coils come in a variety of lifts and load carrying options. The secret is a variable spring rate, like many off road race and rally cars use. Here's what the flexi coils do that the other springs can't. On a normal two inch lift, the shorter shock absorbers limit down travel to stop the coil spring falling out. To fix that, we've removed the standard two inch lift shock and fitted a longer shock that allows much more travel for the flexi coil lift. But here's what happens when you increase the shock length with a normal two inch lift spring. With the extra down travel, the two inch lift coil spring gets loose and falls out. Now watch the GU with the two inch flexi coil lift. These flexi coils here use a machine tapered wire in this section. This does not affect the ride quality or ride height, but the flexi coils expand further and don't fall out with the longer shock absorbers. That way we can use up to four inch longer than standard shock absorbers to increase wheel travel and traction. Watch the difference between normal coil spring suspension and the flexi coils back to back on this track. See how much easier the GU drives this challenge with the flexi coils. The extra wheel travel keeps the tyres on the ground more often, which made the vehicle much more stable and the extra traction helps it drive through much easier. These really are an amazing breakthrough in four-wheel drive suspension. If you want to go further off-road but stay legal and avoid handling and driveline problems, get flexi coils, only available at Suspension Stuff. Take a look at the website at suspensionstuff.com.au or call Brad and the expert team on 1300 048 991 to see our amazing prices and special deals on this fantastic suspension. Garlic steak with noodle rissoles. Now, this is how it goes. To start with, we need to make up a little bit of a, a basting marinade, I guess you'd call it. It starts out garlic steak. You've got to start with garlic. Whack in a fair old whack of, oh gee, I like garlic. Roughly half as much ginger as you put in garlic. This wasn't included in Darren's recipe. Uh, this is some hot chilli. This is just because both Glenn and I really like chilli. We need to include some curry powder. So there we go. Darren specified five spice or bush spice. Well, I couldn't get that at the local shop, but I did get some all-purpose seasoning, which is fairly similar. I'll give that a fair old woofter. In she goes. Now, once we've got all the ingredients in a little mixing bowl, we just give it a bit of a stir there. Get it happening like a bit of a paste. And over here, oh, I got some lovely Scotch beef. Glenno looks pretty hungry. We better do a few of these. How's that barbecue going, Glenn? Spot on, ready to go. Beautiful. This is actually a magical baste. I can just smell it. It's great. There we go, mate. You might have to just give them a bit of a, a slap from side to side. Now, the noodle rissoles. Take a bowl. Just the ordinary old uh, two minute noodles. I've already softened them up. Oh, there we go. Darren's suggestion was to chop up ham and I was lucky enough to grab a pack that's already chopped up. In it goes. We need a couple of eggs. Give her a good old beat. Mmm, I'm starting to think I should have uh, done a slightly better job on breaking up those noodles. How's our steaks looking? Mate, a few minutes away. 
a few minutes wood. away, good. Yep. Darren says, leave it until it's nice and golden brown. Now the way I got that fire going under that, that's about 0.8 of a nanosecond. I wonder what you're supposed to do with the little handles on the egg rings when you flip them over. Too advanced for us, John. That's very advanced technology, Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're nice and golden brown, these wrist holes. I got that part right. I think we'll just remove the egg ring at this stage. Oh, 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 oh. That's hot. Whoops. Yours is looking a bit crook here, Glenn. Mine came out beautiful. Oh, wow, look at that. The bit that was in the egg ring looks fantastic. The other bit that I mangled on the other side, that doesn't look so good, but I know it's going to cook. Righto, Glenn. The old noodle cakes are looking pretty right, mate. We're done here. Wow, look at that. Only one steak. We're putting Glenn on a diet. Vanessa, he asked for it. He said, make me thin, John. I said, no worries, Glenn. When did you start fibbing? <laughs> <laughs> About uh, 56 years ago. <laughs> now, I come to think of it. That steak is fantastic. Have you tried the steak? I did. Is it good? Very good. Now let's check out the noodle whistle. <laughs> it's the go as well. <laughs> Just a year, Darren. For the first time ever, stream or download your favourite DVDs and save them to your personal collection forever. Four-wheel drive action digital DVD. It's your ticket to the best parts of Australia without having to leave your lounge room. Want to get the four-wheel drive action DVDs you're missing or use them to plan your next trip? Don't miss this very special offer. Purchase any five digital DVDs of your choice from our huge online library for only $29.90 and get a free quickie tyre deflator worth $29. Or get 10 digital DVDs online for only $49.90 and get a free 8,000 kilogram Hercules snatch strap worth $49. Jump online now to grab these great deals www.fourwheeldriveaction.com.au slash digital hyphen mags Fraser Island's got to be one of the most scenic places I've had the good fortune to visit all over Australia. Now you know my love of photography and this place is really going to be a treasure trove for me to try and capture that perfect Fraser Island image. Perfect opportunity right here to get a couple of snaps of that beautiful Australian dingo here on a beach in Fraser Island. I'm certainly not going to pass this up. Look at him up there, just posing for me. The dingoes of Fraser Island are some of the purest breed in Australia, but they've become the centre of a heated debate regarding their future here. These days, the Department of Environment and Resource Management are doing everything they can to stop them having any human contact. You know, you can have all the gear in the world, but if you don't have patience, wildlife photography is not going to work for you. The guys that are really good at it, it's nothing for them to sit for days and days just waiting for that perfect opportunity and then getting a shot. That dingo over there, he's not playing ball. I reckon I got one or two shots. People come from all over the world to check out Fraser Island. And I don't reckon there'd be many that arrive without a camera. And I'm no different. Absolutely magic. It's a balmy 28 degrees here, and we're on the windy sand tracks that meander through to Orchid Beach. Now Fraser Island is littered with these single lane tracks that have got a big rut in the centre and then two wheel marks on either side. And a bit of a rule of thumb when you're driving on these is to not fight the wheel. Because if you're fighting the wheel, it means that you're trying to drive either over the rut in the middle or up to one side. You can literally take your hands off the wheel. I don't recommend it, of course. But you can, and the four-wheel drive will literally steer itself because it's being kept in those tracks. So there's no point in fighting the wheel. No good can come of it. Another little tip that I can give you too is find out, this is going to sound a bit weird, but find out where your steering wheel is when your two front tyres are pointing straight ahead. Because if your alignment is out, it means that your steering wheel may not be dead centre when your wheels are pointing straight. And you want to know when your wheels are pointing straight because if you're on a straight stretch of track, 
you want to look at your steering wheel and know that your wheels are pointing straight ahead. You want to know that they're not trying to fight their way up onto the bank. But that's really all there is to it. Don't fight the wheel. Stay in the ruts. The vehicle pretty much drive itself. Hey Jamie, popping out on the beach now eh, mate. Hey look at those waves, they've calmed down too. What have we got ahead of us buddy? The next interesting section is Nagala Rocks. What are we looking at up here mate? Some soft sand, steep, that sort of stuff? Yeah, it can be all, all of that. It's um, at different times of the year. Depends on what the how the water's been, how the wind's been, how the weather's been. Um, it's been quite challenging over the years. I've winched up it, I've snatched up it and uh, yeah, we've towed a lot of vehicles up through there. Mate, I'm up for that. I know the prize on the other side. Yeah, you'll love the other side. This, this is my favourite part of the island by a long shot. Mate, that sounds awesome. Let's get up there. I can't wait. This is the Nagala of Rocks. The nice challenging part to get to the top. Challenging? I can't even see where the track goes. Much less how we get through it. Ah, uh, we'll be right, Graham. It'll be uh, Sean that'll have a bit of the challenge here. Yeah, it's certainly not a normal thing, people taking boats and trailers up through there, is it? No, I'm, I'm thinking myself, it's up to you guys, but I'm thinking I should go first, then we're, then Sean comes up through, and then you come back on the, re on the rear, Graham. Righto, mate. Let's go. Jamie's going up ahead here because he knows this section very well. He knows each and every tight turn, should he need to punch it. Now Jamie is the first car through here and he does not know what to expect. He has also got to deal with the ever-present danger of an oncoming vehicle. So many factors go into play to making it through a section such as Nagala Rocks. Alright, you're going to have to keep the momentum all the way through, Sean. Okay, coming through. Well, Jamie made that look easy. Sean, however, is towing a boat and that's why he is going between Jamie and myself. The reason being, it may not always be the best decision to pull him forward if he does get stuck. Snatching Sean backwards may be a better option. Yeah, I'm stuck just up here, mate. Sean was so close in that attempt. I reckon just a quick snatch forward by Jamie and he'll be on the road again. It's always a good idea when you've got a few people that are experienced in recoveries to all lend a hand. You guys got me? Yeah, mate, I can hear you. I'm coming back. Okay, copy that. You know what, a lot of people told me I was mad taking a boat up here. And they're probably right. <laughs> but when, they, when you get there, then the laugh will be on them. <laughs> let's get there, let's get there, awesome. We've got a bit of a plan, Sean came up with a bit of a plan. Yep. I reckon we get the snatch underway, yep. and do not stop no, no, until you get, you get around to the other side. Yeah. And, and it's long. Then you can okay. hook me up on the back of the boat and pull the ball through. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just hands up, I'll sit back. Ah, ah dude. Relax. <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> Sean's a little bit stuck up there, but he did the perfect thing when he did get stuck, and that is he didn't drill his foot to the floor, he backed right off, and he's hardly sunk at all. And that's the key in a recovery situation on sand. Had he put his foot down, he would have just sunk down to his diffs and then we'd have a real bit of bother on our hands. As it is, I reckon we hook Jamie up. Jamie's got all the power in the world. He's got plenty of momentum, plenty of force behind him. They're just going to power their way up this hill. I don't think it's going to be a problem. Righto, boys. Everything's in place. It's up to you now. I'll stand back and you go for it. All right, you ready? Yeah, Jamie, you fire away, mate. Way, mate, that's the way. It's really soft around this corner, so keep it, keep that momentum going. That's the way, Jamie. Get that truck working for you. Use all that momentum. Good on you, Sean. Well driven, buddy. Well driven. Woohoo! We made it. Well done, mate. Love your style. All oh, right, that was a good hard run, that one. Mate, I'm going to make sure I've still got a boat behind me. So they're through, they're on the other side. 
I'm going to jump in shorty. She will eat this. I've got absolutely no doubt. This is the sort of country she thrives in. Low weight, heaps of power, good to go. Then hopefully it's a clear run right to the top of the Cape and Jamie's dream campsite. Time for Shorty. I'm right at the spot now where Sean got stuck. Up over that, no problem at all. Coming around this corner here. Plenty of revs, plenty of momentum. You can see how you'd lose all your speed through here too. Sun's in your eyes, can't see. Oh, right hand turn. Choose another gear, just keep that momentum going. Awesome, simply awesome stuff. Punching out through the other side of Nagala Rocks was a great feeling. This was the big obstacle, and it was the one that had us most concerned. Getting Sean and the boat through is a great achievement, and now we're on the home straight. A 30 kilometre stretch of beach driving to die for. Before we even get halfway up the beach, we stumble across another of Fraser's reptilian inhabitants. This time, it's a big black what snake. What an absolute cracker. These snakes are highly venomous and a bite could be fatal, so we're staying well back. But no one could have guessed as to what was going to happen next. <laughs> Fisheries officers behind me, they'd already seen it and they were taking a few snaps. Of course, he didn't like that very much. He's a bit camera shy. He's headed up off the beach to get away. First thing he's bumped into is the Land Cruiser. And now he's crawled up through the rim, made himself at home in a spare tyre under the truck. Not too sure what the boys are going to do about that, but we might leave them to it. I tell you what, I wouldn't like to be the person that tries to get that snake out. What an eye-opener though. You just don't know what type of hitchhikers you might pick up on your travels. Here we go. One final push and we've done it. We've reached the tip of Fraser Island, Sandy Cape. Lads, coming around the tip. This is it. I'm turning left. Oh my goodness. Guys, I get to do some pretty amazing things in my job, but I'm about to drive around the very top end of Fraser Island. How amazing is this? And to think this is just in my backyard and that's why I love coming up here. Mate, you're spoiled. This is a paradise. Look how blue that water is. I'll tell you what, now I know where they get postcards from. Yeah, they all come here to shoot the postcards. This is unbelievable. Oh my goodness. We've been itching to get out on Sean's boat, so we don't hold on a second longer. As much as we've enjoyed our drive up the east coast of Fraser Island, we're gonna do something a little different when it comes to picking up the crab pods. We're gonna jump in Sean's boat and travel from the tip down to Wathumba Creek. This should be good fun. Jamie's up front to try and guide us through the sandbars so that we don't bottom out. I'm so excited to see if we've got ourselves some crab for dinner. But look, at the same time, I'm pretty anxious because we were warned earlier by the fisheries guys that people had been in the area lifting other folks' pots and taking the crabs. I'm just hoping this hasn't happened to ours. It was upside down. Yeah. Someone's lifted it. Somebody's lifted it. To my utter disappointment, the worst has happened. Our pots have been lifted and the crab's stolen. That's unbelievable. We were all feeling a bit dejected by the crab pot debacle, so we headed back to the four-wheel drives and into shore. But when the chips are down, what better way to be greeted when you arrive back on the beach? What an absolute pleasure to see such a beautiful creature in its natural habitat, the green sea turtle. This is one of the beauties of Fraser Island. It's an absolute privilege to see this. This old girl's probably come up and laid her eggs last night up here in the sand dunes. And slowly but surely, she's making her way back to the beach. Quite an old one too. You can see all the barnacles on her shell. Awesome to see. Come on, old girl. You can do it. You haven't got far to go. Yeah. She's a bit like the 60, mate. Put <laughs> <laughs> yeah. your lockers in. Hubs are in. Ready? Steady. Here we go. Oh, that's it. That's oh. it. As much as you feel you want to help, you really shouldn't interfere with these creatures. I tell you what though, a bit of encouragement never hurt anyone. This is the one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Woohoo! Yeah! 
See you later. That is as good as it gets. The tip is just stunning. And heading back to camp at sunset, well, it's breathtaking. Look at this, look at the around the tip here. <laughs> Check that out, it's like another world. I'm speechless, this is one of the single greatest things I've seen. And I don't say that lightly, I get to see a fair few things. Yeah, this is phenomenal, it's absolutely magic. Once parked up for the night, we decide to get the lines wet one last time for today and again appreciate Mother Nature's amazing display of colour. But Fraser never lets up and it never ceases to amaze me. This is the thing with fishing up here and it's why we love it. Because out of an amazing, tranquil moment, all of a sudden comes the fight of your life that you'll never forget. It's moving. Go, go, go. Watch the sticks behind you. It's a ray or a shark. Can you see it? Oh, yeah. There it is. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Woohoo! Oh, it doesn't hurt me! It doesn't hurt me! Come on! Move it out! Oh! Oh, he's dead falling! Absolutely beautiful shark here. He's got him on a mullet head. We're gonna cut him out, let him go. Just goes to show, Fraser Island, get anything up here. Yahoo! Yeah! <laughs> it's getting late, I'm gonna hit the sack. Just fantastic. Well, we've packed up, it's time to head off the island. It really is a sad moment because I have loved every second of this. Sean and Jamie, they have shown me everything this island's got to offer. From fishing to mud crabbing, perfect campsites, four wheel driving, feeding fish in Eli Creek, we have done it all. But you know what? This is available to anybody, whether you're gonna come up here with your partner, your mates, your family, it's right there and I plead you, get up here and have a look at it. Get to the very, very tip if you can because that is another part of Fraser. It's a part you've gotta see. Maybe I'll bump into you there, if not, I'll catch you next time on Four Wheel Drive Action. Rear drawers are at the top of most four wheel drivers' wish lists, but high prices put them out of reach for many people. The new Titan rear drawer system comes with quality inclusions like double roller bearings, 90 bearings in total. Look at the strong galvanized steel frame and top grade marine carpet. The inside is also lined. To save you a few hundred dollars, they come with a built-in fridge slide, which is an optional extra on many other brands, with sturdy tie-down points. The strong locking mechanism is protected and fully sealed on the inside, so your cargo won't get caught in it. They're an easy one-person DIY fit in under three hours, and come complete with everything you need to install them. Side wing infill panels make them suit a wide range of models. Compare the quality with any on the market and save because of our wholesale prices direct to the public. Available online at www.fourwheeldrivesupercenter.com.au or in stores. Hi, I'm Greg and this is my 2004 79 series RV Land Cruiser. The bar up front is an ARB steel, uh, colour matched. The lights I've got on the front is two IPF spotlights. On the back it's a steel tray and on that I've added the alloy canopy, fully sealed and it houses all my camping accessories. The accessories on the vehicle have an ARB steel roof rack which I have mounted a solar panel permanently. There's also on the rear is a high lift jack. The rear tyre or spare tyre is, is mounted on the back, uh, as is a ladder. It's a two inch lift all round. Uh, at the front, king springs, EFS shocks all round. 
on the rear, the leaf springs, I've had an extra leaf added and the leaves reset. That's assisted by a poly air airbag assist. The brakes underneath, I've had new pads fitted, EBC black. I have an ARB rear diff locker powered by the ARB compressor under the bonnet. I stayed with the Land Cruiser standard alloys. On that I mounted Goodyear MTR 265-75R16s, around 32 inch in the old terms. Under the bonnet I have dual batteries, uh, the standard cranking and a, a second deep cycle, wet cell, uh, 90 air power. I have another deep cycle, AGM, in the toolbox beneath the tray. The engine is fairly standard, with the exception of the 3 inch Bow Desert exhaust. The snorkel is a standard Toyota Land Cruiser issue. I've just simply changed the intake to a forward facing scoop. Inside the cabin, I've got a 7 inch eBay Special GPS. Up above, I have a Rono console, and I have my GME 3440 UHF radio with extension speaker. Shorter trips, like around South East Queensland, I don't mind going on my own. My wife still works, so I, I get away on my own and I've got it well set up uh, to accommodate that. Uh, on longer term trips, again, sometimes I'm on my own, but in convoy with, with other, other friends who are going on the same sort of trip, such as the desert trip we, we're going together, as well as the Cape trip. We've made it cheaper and easier than ever before to become a part of the Ford of Action family. We've developed pay-as-you-go subscriptions. Get Ford of Action magazine and DVD, the digital version, delivered straight to your iPad. You simply pay as you go. And when you think about it, that's the cost for a meat pie and a can of Coke every three weeks. And guess what? You can cancel any time. But I doubt you're going to want to cancel when you see what we've got in Ford of Action Digital. Hi, my name's Moritz. I'd like to introduce you to Sooty, our 1994 80 Series Land Cruiser. As far as bar work's concerned, we've got the ARB Deluxe winch bar at the front of the car, we've got some custom made rock sliders on the sides, and at the back we have a powerful 4x4 twin wheel carrier. As far as the winch is concerned on the car, we decided to go for the Ironman 12,000 pound winch with a steel cable. With the lights on Sooty, we've replaced our standard globes with the IPF uh, headlight inserts from ARB. For spotlights, we're running the, the Maxxis 150s, which is actually a magazine subscription deal. On top of Sooty, we have a TJM 3 quarter length roof rack uh, in alloy we have a rooftop tent on top, it's an ARB Series 3 Simpson. On the sides of the roof rack we have a rod tube for carrying our fishing rods and the other side we have a pull out awning. Suspension set up on Sooty, we have uh, three inch flexi coils from suspension stuff all around. We have uh, Old Man EMU Nitro Charger Sport shocks in a four inch length and we have sway bar disconnects on the front. Also to assist our steering we have a Tough Dog return to centre steering damper. At the moment up the front our diff is nice and open but down the back we have an ARB air locker installed. Fuel carrying capacity we've maintained the standard 95 litre main tank but down the back we've replaced the sub tank with a 166 litre long range fuel tank giving us a total carrying capacity of 261 litres. All around we've retained the 80 series rims, the standard 16 by 8 steelies. Wrapped around those rims we've got uh, BF Goodrich mud terrains KM2s in a 285, 75, 16. Uh, under the bonnet of Sooty we have a uh, dual battery system. Both batteries in the front are identical. We're running a dual purpose, 760 CCA, 105 amp hour uh, deep cycle battery setup, and the batteries are separated by a red arc isolator. Keeping fresh air coming into Sooty, we have a safari snorkel. Up the top of the snorkel, instead of just having the open inlet, we have a snorkel sock and a snorkel beanie by Unifilter. Navigation purposes for the car, we're running a HEMA Navigator HN5i. Keeping in contact in convoy, uh, we're using a UHF system. We have a GME 3340 remote head um, UHF feeding back through a GME aerial. When we first purchased the car, we purchased it for the eight seats to allow us to move kids around and, uh, and use it as a daily driver. However, over the years, as the kids have started to grow up, the car's now becoming more and more of a off-road car that we use to take out camping and, and enjoying the outback. So we joined a four-wheel drive club to get like-minded people together. Uh, the Motley crew have been fantastic in providing places to go, people to go with, advice and, um, and support. The new Dominator four-wheel drive exhaust by Berkeley are Australian made in Ballarat. Berkeley's 52 years of exhaust manufacturing and design combined with decades of off-road experience to bring four-wheel drivers a purpose-built exhaust for more power and torque, better fuel economy and long life. Watch how this new premium exhaust system ticks all the boxes. They're purpose-built for turbo diesel four-wheel drives and off-road use 
with three inch thick wall tube, heavy duty hangers and a reinforced muffler. For long life, we use premium 409 grade stainless steel for the pipe, high flow catalytic converters and high performance mufflers as well. We stand behind our Australian made premium exhaust with a five year warranty on 409 stainless systems and a three year warranty on aluminized steel systems. Berkeley have pioneered their special pipe through flange design, which offers simpler, more accurate fitment and even better gas flow. For improved throttle response, acceleration and drivability for off-road and towing performance, all dominated by Berkeley exhausts, a three inch diameter and mandrel bent with a large diameter dump pipe included straight from the turbo. All systems include EGT, pyro and oxygen sensor bosses welded in. We use 10 mm thick four bolt flanges with heavy duty gaskets and specially designed heavy duty premium quality hangers. They're designed for an easy, precise DIY fitment at home. With dyno proven power, torque and fuel economy gains, a new Dominator turbo diesel four wheel drive exhaust is one of the biggest bang for your buck mods you can make, especially at four wheel drive super centers wholesale prices direct to the public. Our prices include the complete DIY system with everything you need to fit them all in short lengths for ease of freight to anywhere in Australia. Buy in store, online at fourwheeldrivesupercentre.com.au or call us for more information on 1800 88 39 64. Hi, my name's Chris, this is my 2001 GU Patrol. Bar work on the Patrol is a front x rocks bar and around the side we have custom steps which are welded into custom brush bars cut into the rear guards and to a dual carrier rear bar with a winch capacity. The custom rear bar was made by a man up in uh, Beerburrum, uh, north of uh, Brisbane. He said he'd never make another one again because it took so long to make it. <laughs> uh, winch on the front is about six months old, it's an Avenger Mako. Lights two 240s and two 170s to light us up on the night trips. Uh, we have three roof racks on the roof to cope with the uh, awning on the side and we have a rooftop tent that we put on top. Suspension on the GU was standard when we got it, so now it has a four to five inch EFS coil lift. Tough Dog shocks, 45mm adjustables, snake drop arms at the front, gusseted rear control arms, and obviously adjustable pan hards, drag link, etc. We have one diff lock in the front being an Eaton E locker, and that's proved itself to be very, very capable. Transfer gears were put in by SCA in Ashmore, and they are 43% reduction gears by Marks Adapters. Uh, tires and rims on the Patrol are just steel, 15 by 8 inch with a negative 22 offset and we're running Federal Parages in a 35, 12 and a half, 15. The dual battery system on the Patrol is in the rear of the car, the second battery, because there's no room left in under the hood and that has a C-Tech battery management system hooked into it. Uh, the engine's just a 6.5 Chevy diesel with an intercooler and a turbo, whole set. Snorkel on the Patrol is a Safari. Uh, inside uh, the front of the Patrol we have a uh, HEMA 5 Navigator and an Explorist XL Magellan for when we're off on foot. UHF is a remote head Uniden with the base stored up inside the second glove box. The storage in the back is two very large drawers on rollers and a 50 litre Waco fridge on a drop slide. When we're up in Port Douglas we go out with 4x4 play far north Queensland. Our next major trip will be through the Simpson Desert uh, all the way across to the Kimberleys. We've been working harder than ever in the research and development to bring you our 2014 range of trailers, the Black Series. Starting with the ever popular semi off-road, the lightweight extreme off-road, the Commando models, the new modular Alpha and Delta models, through to our fantastic new range of hard floor campers comprising of the fashionable Emperor rear fold, the state-of-the-art Dominator forward fold, and our flagship rear fold, the Phoenix, Jump online and check out the most informative and interactive website in the industry. Well, how good's this? In my world, this is about as good as it gets. We made it to the tip, Cape York. No, we haven't. It's nowhere near Cape York. It's actually Fraser Island. <laughs> ah. I am proud. Kiss it. On the raisins. Nah, you'd be right. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
He caught a stick. So we're just going to jack it up, try and clean that air out, and head on north. Clean that air out. You actually want the air in there. <laughs> I'm getting, have we got Bushman's on? No, stop being a mother. Mm. Wouldn't it be great if your name was Surface Float? You wouldn't have to write your name on any of this. <laughs> I'd like to thank Adam Boyle for producing the DVD. He was fantastic, of course. How could I forget Gavin Rawlings on head camera? <laughs> the human gaffer. <laughs> I would have filmed you. <laughs> oh, Glenn, guess what? I got the super hot chilli instead of the normal oh, stuff. Oh, good. Good. Bummer. You're going to be doing a lot of something. <laughs> the co-stars, Big Jamie. Jamie's been a leading influence in my life. I've liked his style for quite some time. Dad, chili's hot, but I don't have more. I'll tell you what, the aircon would be nice right now. Oh, it is, mate. Believe me, it is nice. Oh. Oh. And well, Sean, I'm just like Sean. Sean's a heck of a good looking guy. Hell of a nice guy too. Every now and again he wears a singlet. All the ladies go wild. Had a few of the boys. Alright, we'll do that one again. The new CFX50 is a product of years of research and development, tested in some of the toughest four-wheel drive conditions known to man. It incorporates a solid construction and uses the latest technology which makes this one of the most powerful yet efficient fridges on the market. The new CFX50 boasts a stylish yet extremely practical design. To see why I and many other four-wheel drivers only use the new Waco CFX fridge freezers, visit www.waco.com.au.